Up on the hill, in front of the prince's castle, a young rider is putting one four-legged animal through its graceful paces. Down in the prince's forest, another beast is doing pretty much as it pleases, the European bison. Lots of people came to me and said, you are crazy. And Prince Richard of St. wittgenstein Berleburg says it wasn't easy to win over the locals. They have only seen them on f cowboy films, you know, when they are coming, thousands of them. So they thought, oh God, a, a brown wall is coming <laughs> against us. And we always told them, no, no, the, the utmost we want to have are 25 and not one more. At present, a herd of eight European bison roam freely, including a pregnant female. Another small herd is kept in a large enclosure for tourists. That money helps pay for the project and research. The European bison used to roam from France all the way to the Volga River in Russia and down to the Caucasus, but they were hunted to near extinction in the 1920s. These animals were raised from specimens living in zoos. That narrow gene pool creates a risk in breeding. So free as they may be to wander, the European bison won't be allowed to mate as they please. We had to establish a whole new bison population. So the genetic variability is really small. And so we have to observe all the time that uh, if we are making some breeding with animals, that we, we take them which are the most forest apart as possible. Prince Richard welcomes visitors who raise the same animals in semi-captivity in the Netherlands. Looking back on the more than seven centuries his family has owned this land, he takes a whimsical view of his latest project. No, no, it was just a stupid idea that worked nicely. There's an element of noblesse oblige to it all, or privilege which brings responsibility. One which has given the long-lost bison a home again in Western Europe. Nick Spicer, Al Jazeera, Bad Berleburg, Germany.